Hi, this is Anna Bevan and with NC3, and I'm joined by Kevin McLaughlin, who is the VP of Government Affairs at Duke. Thanks so much for joining us, Kevin. Oh, thank you. Thanks to you, Anna Bevan, and to NC3 for, for hosting us. It's a, a great opportunity to talk about Duke Energy. Now, I'm going to confess, I'm the new guy. Uh, I've only been on the ground a couple of months now, and uh, as you and I talked a little bit before, what an interesting few months this has been. Yeah, absolutely. I think this means most of your time and the role has been um, in a global pandemic. I think that's a, a world record of some sort. Yeah. <laughs> I have learned a lot. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to dive into the questions. Um, so we're, we're living a, a completely new normal in our daily lives. Um, those of us that are still fortunate to have jobs are blending work and life together where it seems to have no balance. Uh, how has Duke come alongside your employees in this time? Well, I think it is a great question. I think it's important uh, to recognize since Duke Energy was deemed an essential business by Governor Cooper and one of his initial executive orders, uh, we really have three primary responsibilities. One, we have to keep the lights on. And so many of my Duke Energy colleagues continue to do like they've always done. Uh, they're working the lines, they're working in the control room, they're helping serve our customers. Uh, and many of those customers are those we're very flattered and honored to serve at hospitals, public health agencies, government operations centers. So that work continues. And then the other two uh, focus areas have been to protect our employees, PPE, staggered shifts, staggered entry, temperature checks, and then third, to care for our employees. Mm -hmm. And very early on, just probably a week after uh, COVID-19 really hit, uh, Duke Energy leadership stood up and began to offer financial assistance to our employees, especially think of two income families. Mm -hmm. And if one of them, they may, one of them may still be working for Duke, but the other may be at a restaurant or another facility or, or business. So financial assistance, dependent care services to help those whose, whose child care may be at risk because of the impact of COVID-19 to find, give them time to find new child care if they need it. And then third, emotional support. Uh, our EAP program has really stood up to make sure that uh, we're, our employees know that we're here for them and want to help them through these challenging times. Mm -hmm. And what is EAP? Employee assistance programs. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Great. Um, that's that's fabulous that you are are really approaching um, employee or as an employer, you're approaching all aspects of of the good that that Duke does in the lives of not only citizens but also um, of your employees. Um, uh, so one of my favorite quotes, and I actually think it's um, very very timely is from David Rockefeller. And he says, if necessity is the mother of invention, discontent is the father of progress. And so in that spirit, how has Duke changed or made adjustments during this time? Uh, in addition to me learning about Microsoft Teams and Zoom. Right, yeah, just outside of that. <laughs> outside of that. Um, so I think it's probably fair to uh, put our employees or my colleagues in two categories. Those of us like me who are working from home and it, it is a, it's been a monumental feat for our IT team. Uh, we have 18,000, just about 18,000 employees here in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. A great majority of them began working from home over a weekend and our IT, IT team was able to quickly shift, do what needed to be done uh, so we didn't lose a beat in our main priority which is taking care of our customers. Mm -hmm. And it's impressive to watch. And then there's the other category of my colleagues, and those are those who are in the field. Mm -hmm. I think it's, uh, it's fair to say it has had an impact on, on their regular work. Uh, probably a good story to share was the Easter weekend, this past Easter. Mm -hmm. There was pretty severe and strong thunderstorms that came through the state. About 600,000 customers and so on top of down, power, down trees, mm -hmm. live power lines, replacing poles, et cetera, our, my colleagues with the linemen uh, out there in the field 
they know how to deal with a pandemic. And so what, is, what did that mean? Uh, it meant for many of them, it was single rider vehicles, mm. having two employees next to each other uh, could, have, could have caused a risk. Uh, it meant for the close to 600 uh, linemen who came in from Florida and from the Midwest, they were staying one person to a room. They were limiting interaction between them themselves and also at the hotels, limiting interaction with their patrons. Uh, we want to make sure we keep those, keep those folks safe uh, who are here to help us restore power. And we even had to move away from our base camp operations where you can everybody together, feed them, get them focused, brief them. It went to dining services, which were delivery only uh, to individuals and videotape briefings. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it's a nice reminder for me. I won't, won't speak for others, but a nice reminder for me of all that goes on behind the light switch. Mm -hmm. When I turn it on, the lights come on, it's great. And then behind that is all of this work that's done on a regular basis and then add the pandemic on top of it. Uh, it's been very impressive what folks have been able to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so off of, off of that, um, Duke has been really active in, in direct COVID relief, COVID-19 relief. Uh, will you share a little bit about that? Thanks, we, we'd love to. Um, you know, we kind of just joked about being here at home and, and working from home mm -hmm. compared to the folks who are out in the field. Uh, you know, for me, it has been an inconvenience to work out of the home. My kids do their classwork downstairs. I log into the computer. Uh, my wife's continuing to go back and forth to, to her work at Wake Med. But for us, it's an inconvenience. Um, my, my beard's gotten longer. My, my hair's gotten bigger. Uh, that's about it. Um, but for lots of folks who lost jobs, who are worried about their health and safety, these are very challenging challenging times. And I am so proud of Duke Energy and of our leadership from the CEO on down. Uh, they stood up. And let me just kind of share a few things with you. Please. Back March 13th, it's a Friday, that's when Duke Energy announced that it was going to suspend disconnections for non-payment. So for folks who couldn't afford it, their light bills were going to stay on. The power for their oxygen tanks will stay on. Mm -hmm. One less thing for them to have to worry about. And we did that two weeks before Governor Cooper mandated that all the utilities and co-ops across the state suspend the disconnects. That was a voluntary move to take care of our customers. Mm -hmm. More going forward, we've probably spent close to $2 million, I shouldn't say spent, sent close to $2 million across the state through our foundation, $900,000 of which is going to hunger and social services needs. About 250,000 went to the food banks uh, across the state. 50,000 to the restaurant workers relief fund. 50,000 here in Raleigh at our regional headquarters to the Raleigh relief fund. And then something that was, I thought really neat, uh, along with AT&T, and Google, about $20,000 to help equip school buses that are currently carrying meals to, to, to students mm -hmm. uh, who need it, who are, are going, or um, who need the, the, the food from the schools. They're getting, on top of that, Wi Fi that we're helping fund. So they get a chance to get a warm meal and download uh, their lessons uh, for the day. So it's just a great way of stepping up. And if I if I can say it is, at least it has been for me, mm -hmm. an opportunity for North Carolina's policymakers to see Duke Energy the way I see it. Mm -hmm. A company that is invested and integral to our communities and is there to do what's right when needed. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for, for all that you're doing to, to help the community around you and um, being, being a, a company that is in a lot of North Carolina and covers a lot of the state. Um, your community is a, it's a big word. It's not just your neighbor. It's, it's a lot of neighbors um, all across the state. So thank you for all that work. Well, thank you for saying that. And I, I do mean this. Um, 
it is from the CEO on down. Uh, mm -hmm. It is. We've been able to help our other states where we operate as well. Uh, but those decisions, those quick decisions made back in mid-March, uh, that's, the, that's the leadership of Duke Energy. And it makes me very, very proud to be a, a part of the company. Yeah. Well, there's so much that's just really unknown about COVID-19, even now. Um, we're, we're recording this in um, early, early to mid-May, and there's just, there's a lot we still don't know. Um, with that being said, is there, are there, are there some things that Duke has done in this, in this time that you see wanting to, to, to keep as a part of your operation? And, and how do you really feel that Duke is going to grow and evolve in this process? Um, I think it is, uh, it's been helpful for all of us uh, in recognizing if, uh, the impact and importance of our communities mm. and having a chance to engage uh, has, has been very meaningful to our employees. And so sharing internally of how our employees are, are helping support their neighbors, you can see the impact, you can see how we've been spread working from home, you feel spread apart. And so how do we bring our, bring our teams together uh, to unify them? And one thing that we've really seen is the impact we've had in our community and then helping our customers. Mm -hmm. And then we're all recognizing that as we deal with the health consequences of COVID-19, we're also looking at the economic impact. Mm -hmm. And so our economic development teams, and we have a group solely focused on economic development across our seven states, and importantly for us, you and I here in North Carolina, uh, those teams are ready and are focused on making sure that when the time is right, we are ready to recruit top tier industries to North Carolina to help out our economy. We're focused on, on being a partner for growth. Awesome, awesome. Um, before we close out this interview, is there anything that you would like to share with our membership? Um, just about either or you and how long your, your beard has taken to, to really get to where it is um, or, uh, or just anything else about Duke. <laughs> so in all confess, I had a beard beforehand. It's just gotten longer. So I should, I should say that. Oh, man. Uh, but it, uh, I probably need to clean up when I do my fish, when we start really uh, lobbying uh, officially <laughs> uh, for the work. It is, a Zoom beard is a little different than, uh, than a real life beard. I can probably see that right. as a reality, yeah. That's right. Um, no, what I love is, is the fact that NC Free is doing this. I think it is, it's a great opportunity for, for your members uh, to share what we're doing, for you to add value across the state. You already do in so many ways. And to help educate our, our policymakers on, on what we do, what we stand for, what we believe in uh, is, very, very beneficial to us, and we really appreciate you doing this. Yeah, well, awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Kevin, uh, and have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much.